Hi, and welcome to this content bite introducing you to the concept of microstates and macrostates and explaining their relevance to thermodynamics. I expect this concept is new to you, but in principle it is just the application of simple probability. I've already introduced the concept of entropy and related it to the energy transferred as heat and the absolute temperature, but delta S is equal to Q rev over T doesn't actually explain anything about what entropy is on a molecular level. Let's start our discussion with what happens on a molecular level with two bulbs, one containing a gas and the other under vacuum. Our gut tells us that as we open the tap, the gas will evenly distribute between the two bulbs of the system. Nobody is shocked by the result when it does. This was on a macroscopic or, or big scale. What if I actually could see individual atoms? Now, I'm gonna have the same two bulbs, but I'm going to introduce four atoms, what happens when I have four atoms when I open the trap? I have five possible outcomes. These are my macrostates and they are what I see on the bulk level. It could be that I open my tap and all of my atoms stay in the left hand container. Alternatively, one of my atoms could move to the right hand chamber or two could move or three could move or in fact they could all migrate from the left hand bulb to the right hand bulb. All of these outcomes are possible, but I'm sure your gut is telling you that actually you will get two in each bulb, but why is that? Well, if I look at the possible microstates, this will explain it. For a moment, I'm going to pretend that I can name each atom A, B, C and D, and I can follow where each of these atoms are. There is only one possible way that all of my atoms can be in either the left or the right bulb. But if I migrate one atom from left to right, there are four ways I can do this. I can move A, B, C or D and leave the other atoms behind. The same is true for having three atoms in my right hand bulb. Either A, B, C or D is left behind in the left hand bulb. But there are six possible combinations of having two atoms in each bulb. We call the number of possible arrangements the permutations of the system, and the gut feeling of two in each is the most probable outcome. It occurs six in two to the four times. However, it is actually more probable that there will be three in one bulb and one in the other, if we include both ways that we can do this. The total possible number of permutations is just the number of possible states, in this case two, left or right, raised to the power of the number of particles we are distributing, in this case four. Or in this case, there are 16 unique ways I can arrange my individual atoms. Now, if I have more than four atoms, we still see this same distribution, but it just gets more refined as the number of particles increases. It becomes more impractical with large data sets to manually name and distribute the atoms across my system. So how can I work out the probabilities for particular outcomes? Well, I can calculate the multiplicity of microstates for any given macrostate by using the following equation. Omega is equal to capital M factorial over Na factorial multiplied by Mb factorial. Here, omega is the multiplicity or number of unique microstates. Capital N is the total number of particles, with Na being the number of particles in state A and Nb the number of particles in state B. If there are more than two possible states, then we can introduce additional terms in the denominator. The table here shows the multiplicity of the 21 possible macrostates for the distribution of 20 atoms between two bulbs. We can see that the multiplicities, even for a relatively few number of particles, get very big very quickly, and so the natural log of the multiplicity is counted to make the numbers more manageable. The probability of being in a given state is the multiplicity of that state divided by the total number of permutations. Logic says that entropy is an extensive property. If we have twice as much stuff, we have twice as much entropy, but system permutations are not additive. Boltzmann's big contribution to science was linking the absolute entropy of a system, S, to these multiplicities in an additive way. For Boltzmann, he wasn't interested in the arrangement of atoms in bulbs, but in the number of ways of achieving the same total energy of a system. The constant here is the Boltzmann constant, and you've seen it earlier in the course when we introduced thermal energies and temperature. So entropy is a measure of the number of possible ways of arranging a system. What happens to the entropy as we change the temperature? 
at high temperatures, the particles occupy more energy levels. As such, there are more possible microstates and the probability of a particle being in at any given level has decreased. As such, the entropy of the system has increased. As I cool my system down, the probability of being in any given level um, increases and the entropy decreases until we cool the system such that they all occupy just the ground state. But that is a story for later in the course. I hope that this introduction to the statistical nature of entropy has been interesting and has given you a different perspective on entropy. Remember, entropy is just a product of statistics. The reason we expect particular outcomes is because statistics tells us they are more probable. As always, if you have any questions on this or any other topic in the course, please do not hesitate to ask.